Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of having to settle for mediocre are over. Welcome to Project Relationship. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. Join me as I explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Let's go. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton, and I'm here with Ken Hamilton, my partner. Hello. And this week, we're talking about um, who the heck is this person I'm partnered with. Um, and and I, I'm saying it that way because uh, the fourth chapter of the book, Project Relationship, talks about who is this person? It's so easy to assume that we know our partner. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. I don't think it's bad that we, we think we know each other. But um, underneath all the thinking we know each other, there lies some some real opportunity, let's yeah, say. It's an interesting dance between relying on your knowledge of them and showing your partner that you know them and assuming you know them and like banging up against things you don't know. Yeah, sure. So that all sounds fine. Um, and theoretically, we both know this thing. So why don't we do it? Yeah. So then, <laughs> how just, do we screw it up? To remember it all the time. Because we do. I don't think that oh, yeah. this is an easy thing. The story that comes to mind for me when I think about this and you and me and the holidays, because here we are, this whole season is going to be about specifically relationships around the holidays and the holiday stressors. And I was thinking about how we have a story about how our holidays go. Yeah. And the story I tell myself is that the holidays are stressful, that um, that I'm too needy during the holidays, that I don't contribute enough, that I tend to run away and hide, um, and that I don't know... I don't know what to do, so I get very over-planning, and I, I want to write everything down and have it all planned out. I would say that there's a kernel of truth in all of that, but it's not the whole story. Um, and I have my story <laughs> of, um, well, my my story that I can get all kinds of things done, you know, the day before the holiday. <laughs> and magical so the way, thinking. Yeah, the yeah. Magic, the magical thinking runs through my story. And, um, yeah, and it's um, remembering the story ahead of time. Yeah, the, the, that that like really self narrative that keeps us also locked in in a pattern. Yeah. We've had some bad holidays in the past. Ooh, we have. We've had some doozies. Um, we've had holidays where not all of our children were talking to us. Um, we've had holidays where we were each going through a divorce. Um, we've had holidays where we were friends before there was an us. We've had holidays where we've watched from a distance as one or the other of us was going through some junk and not really known what to do or how to support that. And now that here, here we are, partnered for many years now, we've got, we, we're entering the holiday season and a lot of the discussions over the past couple of weeks has been, how do we remember the difference between the story that we have of the holiday and of each other at the holiday and who we actually are yeah. and, and what we actually want. Let ourselves update. Uh, yeah. How yeah. do we, so that like, like she said, we don't do it well without care and attention. Yeah. What? So I think that the easiest way for us to get through that is to talk about where we are now but before we talk about where we are now and who you are now and who I am now I thought it would be interesting to talk about who we were yeah there's there's a holiday that's sticking out to me um it was a particularly rough one 
it was right after, um, well, not right after, goodness, it feels like it was right after. My mom died in April of 2011. And the holidays, when you've just lost someone, can feel like they just, they, they, they're thrust upon you. Um, and I, my father just passed away a month ago. Ooh, I didn't expect that to come up yeah. and bite it. But, um, yeah. So, so the holiday felt like it, it rushed upon me, even though it was many months later after mom was gone. And our, our holiday was so um, challenging. And my way of getting through that was to try to organize everything. Yeah. So I got hyper-focused on making lists, making sure money was a bit of an issue then. Yep. We were trying to run a business together that was not doing well. <laughs> I mean, it was okay. It was functional, but it wasn't making money. You were working full-time. We were trying to homeschool all these kids. We were living with your um, your former spouse. We were in an unconventional relationship at the time. And unconventional and not terribly successful and, so the stress of well, that not successful from was, the perspective that uh, it it was we were really all struggling at the time right that yeah exactly. yeah i mean it all depends on how you define success um but the holiday stress really compounded everything and i felt so trapped by the memories of um of my mother and the and the holidays and, and all the chances I wouldn't get to make that work the way I wanted to. So I tried to make things really perfect that year. I tried to like, I, I mean, I feel like I was in like an ironing the wrapping paper sort of phase. I was like, I'm going to do everything perfect. I'll show you. I I like outlined every meal. I remember. And um, handmade all the advent calendars for seven That's children. Right. Holy moly, that was It was wild and wild. And um and I was going to school. I was back in school getting my bachelor's degree in psychology at the time and so I'm there were classes these all Saturday would be spent in classes and the holiday energy was present. I felt like I was forcing it. Um and I felt really alone, really, right. really alone. My my dad had kind of, he was dealing with his stress about not having his partner in his own way. He had started dating again right away. And um, that was his prerogative. It didn't really bother me, but it, it didn't, there was not much to work with. It was really rough. Yeah. And I didn't feel like you and I were on the same page. Yeah, we were... Well, I was definitely struggling, and this kind of brings us to, yeah, who who is this person? Uh, oh, we were just past the phase of full projection. Oh, exactly. At the beginning, yeah. it, I thought you and I were so much alike. <laughs> yeah, we're I not. really did. <laughs> we <laughs> I have did. similarities. I but thought we're that not we were like, that yeah, way. and I, I I see now, and I love the concept of projection for this reason yeah. because it let me withdraw. Like, oh, actually, I'm just projecting onto you. All of the yummy, awesome, great stuff that is true about that me. That is I true was about you. Projecting it onto you. It may have been true about you, but that wasn't actually what I was paying attention to. Right. And I think so. That Christmas 2011, I think, was the first season that we started to see other as other. Yes. Like actually someone separate. That was not simple. It so was I interrupted not you. Go ahead. Well, I was I... just uh, so you were looking to build a to to create a, a perfect holiday. You were putting so much time into that, and your definition of what was perfect, it wasn't what was perfect for you. You were looking out at what could be perfect, based on and back you know so yeah. a story, and the stories of all of the kids and me. And I did try uh, to collect stories. You, I asked everyone. Yep, I made these lists did. about like, so what's the most important memory that you have? Yeah. And what's the most important memory you want to make? And so you were asking the questions and uh, those are the questions that that you can ask your partner. So what is a perfect holiday day for you? What, for example, just to make it easier, when you get up on a holiday day what would be perfect yeah and i think for me 
If you're asking me I that am asking right now, you that right now. We, it and, depends on the holiday. And that, yep. Because so we're we are recording this right before Thanksgiving. Um, it's the day before American Thanksgiving, um, but we celebrate on Saturday. We we have since our since my divorce, um, we've celebrated on Saturday, and I actually really love that. So my favorite holiday of the whole year is what we used to refer to when we didn't ever have children at home on Thanksgiving Day proper. We called it Naked Thursday. I loved Naked Thursday. Naked Thursday was Naked great. Thursday. It just meant it, it represented to me what it like what we really wanted, which was to wake up and just spend the day together without a, an appointment or a gym to run or a care in the world, like for just one day to be in a bubble. And everybody else was busy yep. and out doing things and wrapped up. So even Facebook was quiet and every everything was quiet. Yeah. And that was perfection um, for the season, for the, or for the time. For that time. For, the, for that period of our that life. that period of time. Yeah, that was awesome. It was amazing. And, and I, I mean... We had a lot of kids, so it was also this amazing break. Like, yeah. oh, God, the house is quiet and still, and that was really cool. And that that is so important that that was perfect for for that time for that holiday, because I've taken that that message that that I got from you that picture, and I've tried to insert it into other places and other times without asking. Yeah, and that's <laughs> it. It doesn't it doesn't fit everywhere. Yeah, and I need to check in with you to say well is is this how you would like tomorrow to go is this how what we're going to do what should we do and have the conversation but instead there have been many times when i have tried to force something without asking and you do tend to generalize we have before talked about that like i seem to have a crayola box with you know a full 64 pack yeah, right and yep. you tend to have more of an eight pack yeah. Not in emotions. You have a very, you have a wide variety of emotions and a lot of um, ability to describe them. But when it comes to traditions and um, and even like just like the foods that you're going to eat, the recipe, your imagination of My the creative possibility is, of the holidays away from is me. way more narrow. I spent. A lifetime making things, yes. creating things with my hands. And I believe right in my core that I can make anything I want. And I think that's true. Um, and you, um, no, no, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, that that was happens. bound to happen sometime. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, so, so when I hear you trying to make that Naked Thursday feeling fit into another time. I've seen it. You've done it on weekends off sometimes, or you'll do it. You did it one year on New Year's Eve, except it wasn't like, it wasn't what we had planned. Like you forgot. It was a simplification. You have a tendency to, to oversimplify yes. and just go for like the general mood of yeah. something. And a practicality. Network. That's the thing that I was going to say. Oh. You believe that you can make anything and you have... This, you know, a, a, what are we going to do tomorrow? Well, you hold the practicalities of it. You have done so much. You have made so many things. You have organized so many things that the practicalities of these things are right there. Plus, you're just generally a more practical person than I am. Whereas I have this magical thinking and this... You have this, a like, brilliant imagination. And, but it is lofty. But it is lofty. lofty. and And so you know about me that... When I say, well, I want to do this, and you know to bring up, to remind me of My the imagination is chthonic. It. It's very, it's very of the grounded. Earth. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Mine is very airy yeah. and uh, sanguine. It's just, sure, it's... we could do this. Um, but if you did, <laughs> would it work? And can you? <laughs> All yeah. these questions. And, that, and you know to one. ask those things. That's tough, though, because sometimes I, I feel like I'm pointing out to you your limitations when I'm asking the refining questions and trying to make sure that these things can really happen. Um, and that's hard because, in fact, I believe that you could make them happen. What I'm usually trying to point out is, yeah, but are you going but to? But are you going to? Is and he, though? <laughs> is he, though? And uh, the questions that you ask or the things that you point out, um, and this is information for anybody anywhere so you ask a question or make a comment and the only thing that can uh, only thing something that will very commonly go wrong is my ego will be will will 
stand up between me and the question and make it mm. i could interpret it as a as a as an attack an or a, an accusation or and, and what i have learned to do over time is realize that you have the same goal i do because we have talked about it and i know that we do and it is to have a, a holiday time that at the holiday things will go smoothly because we've prepared for them that's because that's what I need. Because that's what you need. I, I really need, I need smoothness far more than I need any particular thing. I'm actually pretty cool, personally. If you asked me what I wanted, I wanted to go smooth. That's a, that's yeah. a great, so this was right. a conversational way to get that. I don't feel, it's not that big a deal to me personally, whether we can travel or not at the holidays. I mean, we we don't have any living parents, which definitely changes the, the vibe yeah. of that. Um, so I don't mean to say it shouldn't bother anyone, but but I tend to just feel like it's okay to just toss whatever pieces of tradition you don't want, write them down, capture them as memories, absolutely, yeah. but then let yourself do what works now. I feel that way about, say, what we serve for Thanksgiving dinner or which day we choose to celebrate on or what kinds of gifts we give or like how we can budget for gifts on any given year. Right. And all Being of these practical things yeah, and helps me feel safe, which helps me feel like the holiday is actually a period of rest and yeah. turning inward and reflection and rejuvenation. And the, the, the practicality is a common thread through all of it. The, the desire for smoothness and, um, but it can't be the smoothness. My, oh, but my mom wanted smoothness too. Mm. But she had an imagination. Oh, I, I really, I love my, I love my parents. But my mom had, and my dad was the one who told me this. My mom had a picture in her head of what the holidays were supposed to be, and it was very Norman Rockwell. But she didn't grow up in a Norman Rockwell family, really, and that's okay. But she, and then she didn't make one, and that was okay too. But the picture was shattered, fresh every year Ouch. every yeah. year and so she would hide so yeah my fear that i'm needy and because i'm sure i am there's a kernel of truth to it but my fear of being needy and of running away and hiding my mom did run away and hide she would run into her bedroom she would get these really huge headaches and she would need to go be alone and yeah she was protecting herself and i give her a lot of credit for dealing I want to be able to stay out and with you all. And that means I need to not have a picture that is unattainable for our given situation, for what what's real right now. And that means I need to check in with all of you. It's not even enough to check in with just you. So we have um, adult children. <laughs> They're, we have, we have yep. an 18, and 18, and a 21. They get to decide for themselves what they do. So we have yep. to check in with them too. What do you need? What would feel good this year yeah it's and the, complicated it, it is complicated and so knowing knowing that year to year holiday to holiday different holiday to different holiday everything changes for us fairly Fairly frequently rapidly. and rapidly so far things tend to change really pretty fast and so we have to stay aware of those changes and not try to so we we have had a couple of like real high quality holidays we can't replicate them no we could make another good one but we can't just take like what we did then and do it again and yeah. have it work the same way yeah i mean we had a wonderful holiday um we did. We had a wonderful and very poignant holiday in 2015. My brother was living with yeah. us, and he was yeah. he was dying um, of cancer um, and kidney disease. And at the time, he was still in treatment, but it, it was clear to both of us that this was very likely the last Christmas with him. And it, it was... It was an opportunity. It was a it was a moment in time we had to let go of what had yep. been, and let what was be be a, be okay, be more than enough. Um, and he actually sort of rapidly moved in and out of the house in like for like four weeks. He moved out, moved in with some friends, and moved right. back. Um, and it was it was there was a lot of chaos, but there was so much. I remember each of 
each member of our, our little family here turning and looking at each other like, wow, this yeah. is real. Yep. This is when we get to be alive. Like even the youngest kids, I mean, the three youngest, um, yeah, they were, so what, they were in fourth Five. grade? Third, third grade at yeah, the time, you know, like, grade. I don't know, something like that. Um, fourth or fifth grade, I guess. And they got it. Yep. Noticed like, oh, this is different. And that made for a holiday I would never wish upon anyone. And yet. Yeah. Some of the clearest, most. Yeah, most, most relational and connected and spiritually aligned memories of the holiday for me are are in that one are in knowing wow don't take any of it for you granted don't take it for granted yep and then rolling with the punches and deciding to i because we are getting up at four o'clock to drive him to dialysis that's right you know? yes <laughs> like, those early day before christmas drives. and stuff and taking advantage of of what what we had at the time and making it making it good but we're never going to repl replicate that. We're never going to replicate <clears throat> a couple years later when we um, when we got to surprise the kids with a trip. Oh We've my only goodness, traveled yeah. as a whole family once. We got to surprise them with that. Yep. We can't replicate those times. And now everything changes again. So yeah. no, there's no Papa down the hill. There's no Papa down the hill. There aren't. The, ki the kids have gotten a lot older. So we're stuck in this pandemic. We're stuck in a pandemic. But we're alive, we're healthy, we have each other. What do you want for the holidays? What What do you want? What would make this feel like you could look back at 2020 and say, yeah, and there was something crystalline in that, something brilliant as well? So I, okay, so the thing that I want is to have us to have the bunch of us who are here in this house uh together on this day do something fun together it's again about the play oh right of course right? see and my brain did not go there i'm thinking of all the things you might list and i'm not even though you just told me that you told the whole world that, <laughs> that you're gonna focus on play i i like the play so i mean there are there are whole whole family games we can play yeah. i we have not yet gotten all the kids together on an improv game that sounds <laughs> no fun. those are fun though but they're and throw they, throw burrito they will, play. they will play they just don't all like it <laughs> right and the same for carol like so i want to sing and i'd love that singing yeah. makes my day but one of our kids is like no way nope but we but you know what we made progress last year because i got some of what i wanted last year because we gave him a harmonica yes. and he nailed it yeah he's like okay i can harmonica this up so he joined in, but he didn't have to feel uncomfortable. I will remind him about the harmonica today yeah. so he can start practicing. That was awesome. That was, that was, that awesome. was great. And for me, I want um, I want some quiet that doesn't feel like it's waiting for the other shoe to drop. And I know that that's yeah. really... We're in a pandemic. We are in a time where nothing is guaranteed. One of our kids works at a hospital and... That's just reality. Um, it means that we're very aware of, of what's really happening in our very yep. town. Um, I would like to have some some times, and I think for us, movies have done that. Movies have done that. Stories. Um, Stories. And movies are a, a convenient way to do that. Yeah, we used to read a lot of children's Christmas books. We a did. lot of them. In fact, we have like a stack um, of children's Christmas books and now that they're all older, it feels like movies have taken that place. So, yeah, I think... Because I don't know if I could get them to sit still for reading a book to them. I don't I, know. I guess we could try. We could try. We'll see. And enough cider, and they'll sit for almost My anything. My goodness. That's true. <laughs> I think that the thing that we can do is notice where we are right now. So we started this yeah. this episode. We started talking about who is this person, and I'm realizing that for us... Um, who I am as a mother, who you are as a father, is deeply connected to who we are in, in, in the frame of reference of, like, the holidays. Yeah. I don't feel like I can separate myself very much from my 
my label of mother. Even though in the rest of my life, the rest of the year, I don't feel quite that inextricably attached. I feel like I can can actually separate and say, no, I, but I'm me. My children, I, this is a controversial statement. My children are not my whole world. I know a lot of people feel differently um, and I don't judge that. But I have always taken a tactic with my kids of them being their own people who came here through me. And I, ha I have a, a deep um, and abiding, like, not just obligation, like a, a commitment to them and to supporting them and to helping them. But that they are their own individuals first. Which, and so... And that which keeps you interacting with them in ways that lets you understand what they're looking for. Yeah, but then uh, that's the what I see. It can creep up uh, um, they, a little it bit. It totally can. It, I mean, the projection that that we do for each other, we can also do to a holiday. I mean, your mother projected a story onto Christmas. Yeah. In your house. Yep. That um, interfered with her ability to get the thing she wanted. Yeah, she actually got less of the thing she wanted because of it, and and we talked about that in her. She, she passed away fairly young. She was only 56. Um, but in her last um, seven or eight years, we talked about things like that. And she had no, she didn't know why she kept doing it. But she was trying to let go of those things. And she was really going with the flow so much more in those last few years. And it did change. It changed how it felt to relate to her. Um, and I was grateful. And it taught me a really big lesson to allow allow myself to be influenced by the circumstances, the reality of the circumstances, and to be gracious in that, or as gracious as I can manage at the time. That is that is the, the big trick, right? So, okay, I'm going to claim that, I, that I'm going to let this holiday season unfold the way it will. I'm going to do my things and see what happens. And that's a relatively straightforward thing to claim. The next thing is to claim doing it with grace yeah. <laughs> and not getting all my panties in a twist uh, about everything all the time. Yeah, well, that's, that's a different easy. that's a different uh, task. So I hear that you you're going to once again, you're going to focus on play. Yes. Which I can think of a bunch of ways I can support that one is to remember to come out and play myself because mm. I tend to be a little bit slower to the play. And I will invite you clearly thank you that's really helpful it is helpful and it's helpful when one of the kids will invite me as well like hey we're doing this thing let's let's do that and um, i hear your games and whatever uh your um your desire for smoothness for for well for the thing that i know that i could best give you by making sure that things are planned and prepared for. Yeah, it's so more than just intention. It's way more than just Because intention can be in just the moment. Yeah. But this is actually about like forethought. Yeah, and, it's forethought. And, give, and taking into account where we actually are. Yep. And the limitations of that. That, yep. that would help me. It would. Oh, this was a really productive one. Yeah. Awesome. It's good for us. Well, thank you all for listening. I really appreciate it. And yeah, we'll be back on in just a few days to talk about the next section i don't even remember what it is right now something good what are we talking about oh my oh resilience resilience, resilience. it's funny i think we've already started talking about i think it. we have all of these things are interactive yeah so oh yeah, yeah. okay so next time bye everybody bye Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. In episode four, Ken and I talked about the mess we sometimes make when we forget that who we've been isn't who we necessarily are now. I found some nuggets of joy in remembering that even the hardest holiday seasons contained memories that I count as blessings. Ken and I asked each other what we needed this year, this season to have a pleasurable, memorable holiday. And we discovered that it can be hard not to let the habits of the holidays become the driver of our actions. We committed to bringing intention to our plans and our fun. I hope you take a few minutes to have a conversation like this with your loved ones, whether it's your partner, 
or great friend or parent? What questions could you ask that would help you enjoy this holiday season just a little bit more? I hope you ask those questions. Join us next time when we talk about relationship resilience and the paradox that confidence can be in relationships. At the holidays, resilience might be the one skill to help us all. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.